If we asked you what variable retention or overstory removal meant, how would you answer? Those questions may leave you stumped. How about a hint? Those terms are another way of saying clear cut. You can see these terms for yourself on a map put together by the provincial government, but the words clear cut that most people understand are not on the map. The government says the map is a way to get information to the public, but not everyone understands the terminology. If you have a degree in forestry, you're more likely to know what the terms mean. Take, for instance, the word prescription. It has nothing to do with pharmacy. It's actually the way or method the trees in a forest will be cut down. It gives an indication of how many trees will be taken from a specific area. So it's quite a scientific uh, technical piece that uh, not everyone would uh, understand uh, the processes of uh, coming to uh, a certain prescription. So what exactly does the map show? It identifies proposed areas where trees will be cut in the future, and it describes the proposed harvests using that forestry terminology. But it's hard to know how many trees within a specific area are coming down, and it doesn't tell you what kind of trees and wildlife are in the forest that's slated for cutting. The map includes information about forests cut in the past three years, but there's no information about harvests before 2016. Without seeing the whole picture of what's around a proposed harvest, it's hard to know how much forest will be left. Rankin says including data about previous cuts could increase download times for people in rural areas who might have limited internet speeds. But that whole picture? It provides the context to show how many trees have been cut over a long period of time. Rankin says the map is a work in progress. If you have concerns about a harvest, you can submit comments through a tool on the map. But some users have concerns about privacy. You must authorize the sharing of any personal information that you provide. Your comments are passed directly to the private company that has the license to cut trees on Crown land. Rankin said he hasn't heard any concerns about privacy, but CBC News has. I had no clue what I would be saying would be going to the company that I actually have problems with or may have concerns with what they've come up with as far as a plan for Crown land. That's troubled and kind of shocked me. I just feel that when I'm making comments to a government department, I should feel safe in that. And it should be going to the department and the department only. And then they should be taking that comment and doing an investigation and responding to me. I don't feel it should be going to industry people. Um, and then that could have repercussions or I feel a little intimidated by that. There's another element in question, accountability. Private companies that respond to the public's comments are not accountable to the public. And there's no way to know if anyone from the government reads the concerns. If there is a concern that's elevated beyond um, routine questions on a harvest plan, then our staff are engaged and they do monitor every question that comes into the map viewer. Nova Scotia taxpayers own the province's crown land and so many people have called for more transparency, a user-friendly map, and a better way to inform the public about tree cutting on crown land. This map is the only way for the public to find out about which crown forests are on the chopping block. To be notified about updates to the map, you need to sign up on the Department of Lands and Forestry website. <laughs>